the hustle and bustle that surrounds Christmas, it always seems a bit of a shock when you realize that Christmas is just three days away. That tomorrow is the last shopping day before the big day, and the two days from now, millions of little children will be tucked into their warm beds and will try somehow to stay awake just a little longer in the hope that they will see Santa Claus bring them their presents. Christmas is a funny time of year, a time of year when men and women seem to forget their fears of ever showing emotions. It's a time when we get caught up in the rush to give, and we find we are perhaps just a little more understanding of our fellow man. We are not as impatient. We stand in lines at liquor stores or department stores, but for just about the only time during the year, we don't seem to mind. But we are busy looking at other people, watching their faces and even noticing the sparkle in their eyes. And we wonder if they are thinking, as we are, of some loved one. At Christmas, we help the poor, as we never do during the rest of the year, and we discover the incredible secret that by giving and by sharing, we often receive so very much more. At Christmas time, wars come to a peaceful pause. And for only this short moment, killing and violence are shown for the horror they truly are. I remember my grandfather telling me stories when I was just a child, and I could listen to him for hours, and he told of a time when he was in the First World War, cold and huddling in a soggy trench. There was a Christmas ceasefire. They could see the trenches of the Germans ever so close in the distance, when suddenly a little black object flew from the German lines and landed in his trench. His men flattened out in the ground, for they were sure it was a hand grenade, and that it may end a Christmas for many. But it was Christmas, and neither side were for killing that day. It was a loaf of German black bread, a delicacy for our troops, but commonplace for the Germans. In return, the Canadian troops threw white bread to the German trenches, and then, believe it or not, both sides played a game of baseball in the friendship of a moment. But perhaps it's the tragedy of mankind that these moments come only once a year, and that our civilization, with its profound capacity for compassion and love, is but a seasonal thing. We would perhaps all be well advised to find some time this Christmas, to find somewhere to sit, perhaps near the tree, with the smell of Christmas turkey filling the air and the laughter of children bringing warmth to our hearts. To just sit and think about what we feel at that moment and about what kind of a person we really could be. And maybe we can make a bargain with ourselves. Maybe we can choose some future date and we don't have to tell anyone about it. And when we've chosen the date, let us decide that that day will be just like Christmas. In fact, another Christmas. On that day, we will try once again to feel love for our neighbors, compassion for those less fortunate, and admiration for those more fortunate. And this Christmas, when you look at your tree or your young child, do not be afraid of the emotions that you will feel. It is not unmanly to feel love, nor is it weak to require love. These feelings that you have at this time of year are perhaps the true you but are forgotten or pushed aside with the New Year's resolutions. Each and every one of us can be a better person than we think we can be. And it's at Christmas time that this realization can occur. So in closing, may I say to each and every one of you, a Merry Christmas, peace, good health, and good love. And let's not wait till next Christmas to have that again.